Right now on NBC 26 Live at 10, Decision 2016 coverage. The latest from the campaign trail is both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton scramble to win the swing states. And a tragic end to a high-speed chase officers say reach speeds of 100 miles per hour before a deadly crash ends it. And Hurricane Matthew slammed into Florida, tearing up lives as it hit. We asked you for help, and you came through. How your donations are making a difference. Latest coverage you will only see here on NBC 26. We are live in Florida for our Hurricane Matthew relief drive. That's right. The storm has caused millions to be without power, and storm surges caused heavy flooding just weeks ago, leaving so many homes and lives damaged. Now, thanks to your generous donations, we filled up a truck and rode down to help the Florida Salvation Army. Eric Crest is live from St. Augustine now with an update on the relief drive. Eric. Here in St. Augustine, they're getting back to business as usual tonight. But just over two weeks ago, after Hurricane Matthew came through here, all of these businesses you've seen behind me, they were closed. And many of the homes that I saw in this neighborhood as well, well they're severely damaged. And while Northeast Wisconsin is about 1,300 miles away from this point, many in our state felt compelled to do something. So much. Welcome so much. It was just a week ago and we asked you to do what you can to help fill this truck for the victims stuck in the path of Hurricane Matthew. I was actually watching the news last night and this came on and I thought, well, what a great opportunity to uh, show that we care. We decided to bring a lot of items that uh, would help children. So we brought <laughs> things like SpaghettiOs and macaroni and cheese and um, canned goods. <laughs> After five days of collecting, a nearly full truck left Green Bay on its way to Jacksonville. But it would never have happened if a couple from Northeast Wisconsin hadn't had the idea. He kind of looked at me and he said, what about us? Meet the new Bowers from Northeast Wisconsin, a semi-truck driving couple that came up with the plan and asked for our help to fill this semi after they heard about the damage in Florida. When the hurricane came through, you know, it was like, how many people do you worry about that don't have food, don't have any clothing, you know, because they lost it all. So, I mean, it was like, it was our way of helping back. The new Bowers didn't charge anything for the 20-hour drive. They even gassed the rig up. They wanted to give, just like so many others in Northeast Wisconsin. It was really nice because, you know, to see it go from just a little bitty idea into this big, huge thing where everybody's donating and giving of their time and, you know, items for everybody else. It was wonderful. Your donations made their way here to Jacksonville, Florida's Salvation Army. We saw a significant drainage on our pantry and um, you know we were still able to serve the people that we needed to serve but I'll be honest we were starting to uh, bite our nails a little bit because it was getting down quite low. This nonprofit couldn't have been more surprised by the generosity of the Midwest. It just feels amazing to me that, you know, people on the other side of the country from us, you know, all the way up north in Green Bay, see us down here in Jacksonville and say, we can help. And then they, they don't just see the need and feel like they should help, but they do. They actually take the steps and help. And as the new Bowers make their trek back to Wisconsin this evening, they're not thinking about what they did. So we want to thank everybody that did donate. It was a great help. They're thinking about what their community did with one simple idea, to care for those who need it. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. And from the dozens of people that we met in St. Augustine today and from NBC 26, we'd like to say, say thank you to everyone who helped fill that truck. Keeping you connected in St. Augustine, I'm Eric Crest with NBC 26. All right, thanks, Eric. Decision 2016 coverage now. Hillary Clinton leads Donald Trump by five points as the presidential campaign heads into its final two weeks. A new CNN ORC poll shows Clinton tops Trump 49% to 44% among likely voters. 3% of voters back Libertarian Gary Johnson and 2% are supporting Green Party nominee Jill Stein. Now today Donald Trump campaigned in Florida. Where he was insisting the new polls are not correct. Brian Moore has the story from Washington. The race for the White House is ticking down to its last two weeks, and Donald Trump is urging supporters to ignore the many polls that show he's in trouble. It's called voter suppression because people will say, oh, gee, Trump's out. We're, folks, we're winning. We're winning. 
On a day when early voting began in Florida, Trump spent more time talking about a rigged system than a breaking news bombshell. The White House confirmed some Obamacare premiums are about to go up by double digits. That headline cannot help Hillary Clinton, but right now she's dominating the battleground map. I'm proud to have the support of more than 150 Republican leaders in this state who put country before party. Clinton's trying to use her clout to help down-ballot candidates while her surrogates take on Trump. Get this, Donald. Nasty women are tough. Nasty women are smart. And nasty women vote. Meanwhile, Trump's running mate, Mike Pence, is reaching out to Republicans who have strayed. It's time to come home and elect Donald Trump as the next president of the United States. Hopes that may hang on a single state. Florida. Brian Moore, NBC News, Washington. Well, tomorrow, Chelsea Clinton will make another visit to the Badger State to campaign for her mother. Stops are planned in La Crosse, Stevens, Point, and Madison. She's expected to encourage voters to get out and vote early. It was another really nice day here in Northeast Wisconsin, at least by late October standards. We had tons of sunshine and seasonable temperatures. Tonight, we are looking at mostly clear skies with temperatures now falling into the 30s. It is 37 degrees in Green Bay. We've got 36 degrees in Wausau. Most spots will bottom out in the lower half of the 30s as we head into tomorrow morning, which brings us to your bus stop forecast. Look for a mixture of sun and clouds. Temperatures will be close to freezing by the final bell, lower 50s with mostly cloudy skies. Back to you. Thanks, Cameron. A 14-year-old Milwaukee boy is dead tonight after he crashed a stolen car into a light pole in Grand Chute following a high-speed chase. NBC 26's Marissa DeCandido has those details. Tire tracks and debris still visible after a fatal single car crash in Grand Chute early Monday morning. He was about 14 years old from Milwaukee area. He was staying with his uncle in Oshkosh. Police say the teenager stole his uncle's car and led officers on a high speed chase on 41 South from Richmond Street to Wisconsin Avenue just before midnight. One of the officers inside the squad car estimated that the speed of the vehicle was reaching about 100 miles an hour and felt that it was no longer safe to follow the vehicle. Officers say this was the path the boy's car traveled as he got off that exit ramp and eventually crashed into a light pole that was here in the IHOP parking lot. The officers immediately rushed to the scene, removed the driver from the vehicle, and then performed uh, life-saving measures until emergency responders could get there. The boy was flown to Theta Care Regional Medical Center where he was later pronounced dead. Now the investigation is in the hands of Wisconsin State Patrol. I know last night they had their reconstruction team out there working on that as well. Still trying to figure out the boy's motive and if he had any previous run-ins with the law. In Grand Chute, I'm Marissa DeCandido, NBC 26. Police have identified the man who shot his brother before killing himself in Appleton as 21-year-old Danny Ortega. Investigators are calling the incident on Oneida Street a tragic case of domestic violence. Ortega's brother was shot in the leg and is expected to survive. A Sheboygan Falls woman accused of murdering her two-year-old son will likely undergo a psychiatric evaluation next week. 27-year-old Caitlin Kinnitator faces charges for allegedly suffocating her child back in August. She'll be back in court for a status hearing with the results of her evaluation on November 21st. The judge said today they can hopefully set a trial date at that time. Milwaukee police are searching for a man who stole a car with a baby inside yesterday. Police say the child's mother left the car running at a gas station. That's when the suspect stole the car with her one-year-old in the back seat. A relative says the mother is used to living in a safer community. A man accused of an armed robbery in a Schwabenon has been arrested. Robert Morgan Neely of Lakeville, Indiana, was taken into custody after a search warrant at a Motel 6. Police believe he robbed two Green Bay Area hotels. Neely could face two charges of armed robbery. Well, Secretary of the Navy, Navy Ray Mavis is in Marinette today advocating for the future of our nation's fleet of littoral combat ships. That's right. The Navy is calling for 52 new ships to be added to the fleet as quickly as possible. And Secretary Mavis says it can happen without Wisconsin. The next ship to come from the production line at Fincantieri Marinette Marine will be better than the last. They can get in closer 
they can operate with carrier strike groups. As technology advances, the hangar, which can support up to two navalized Blackhawks, they're known as Seahawks. And sailors' skills improve. We're finding new ways of using this ship almost every day. All while the cost of building these ships is going down. With these facts, Secretary Ray Mabus is hoping to keep this shipyard thriving. There are 2,000 direct jobs here in Marinette. There are 9,000 indirect jobs in this region. 13 ships are currently being built in Marinette, with three currently on the water. But reaching the Navy's assessed need of 308 ships in the fleet by 2021 will take serious work. What it shows is it takes a long time to build ships to turn a fleet around in terms of size. Now the future of this nation's naval fleet depends on a few key issues, issues that will fall in the hands of the next president along with future administrations. The next administration whoever comes in is going to have to make a decision as to bill schedules, as to how many, as to what type. Giving quantity a quality of its own. Well, coming up, no pain at the pump. The summer driving season is over and gas prices are dropping. Find out where you can fill up your tank and save the most money. Plus, BART star Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers, the Packers' trifecta of quarterbacks, how you can get your hands on the new must-have Packers picture. You're connected to NBC 26 News at 10 with Cassandra Duvall, Billy Wagons, Chief Meteorologist Cameron Moreland, and Sports Director Charlie Sakaitis. NBC 26 News at 10, keeping you connected.